Frig. Head tube angle, 68 degrees. Seat tube angle, 69 degrees. Chainstay, 432 millimeter. And rear travel, 152 millimeter. Oh, that's not this bike. That's this one. A 2001 Santa Cruz Bullet, which this particular bike is as close as it matters to the same bike that Stevie Smith, Canadian mountain bike legend and the Canadian Chainsaw Massacre, rode to victory in his first BC Cup by over a minute. This objectively very different bike is the bike that's named after him, the Chainsaw. The Da Vinci Chainsaw to be exact, hand welded in Chicoutimi, Quebec with aluminum from right here in Canada. Stevie Smith was made by his mom in Cassidy, BC, and he was one of the kindest, funniest, and smilest guys in the bike industry, with a mustache that Ron Burgundy would be jealous of. Stevie passed away in an accident in 2016 while riding enduro on his motorcycle. He was an important human to mountain biking and to a whole lot of people. I didn't know him. I was in and around the same places often enough that we had a nodding relationship where he would nod at me in recognition. I would smile and giggle and want to throw my underwear at him. And here he is now in a product. The chainsaw comes in two models, the Enduro and the DH. I'm riding the Enduro and I gotta say, it's one of those way better looking in person kind of bikes, you know, where it doesn't really look good on the internet, but in person you're like, oh, that's, that's nice. It's thin profile aluminum tubes that line up and create a strong backbone for the bike, make it feel like an arrow ready to let loose. And the 32 millimeter diameter top tube and the 43 millimeter diameter down tube made of lifetime guaranteed aluminum doesn't try to trick you into normalizing the size of an e-bike battery compartment by offering you room for your luggage. It looks good in a way that lets the world know it's different. And it is different. It's designed to be affordable. Some context. Cheapest Santa Cruz V10, $8,899. Cheapest Trek Session, $6,899. Cheapest Common Saw Supreme DHV5, $7,400. And the Da Vinci Chainsaw, $5,799. Wow. And that's the top build of the DH model. All those other bikes can go way up from what I just quoted. This chainsaw is the Enduro version. What's the difference? The mullet got a haircut, so it's 29 inch wheels front and back. Single crown fork on the front, some component differences, and this one is $500 cheaper and gets an air shock. But it is the same bike. I mean, it's just wearing different jewelry. So why make a bike at the entry level price point that's named after one of the fastest riders to have ever lived? After Stevie's passing, the Stevie Smith Legacy Foundation was set up with the goal to support the next generation of rippers. And Stevie's mom, who is a director of the foundation, I think best understood his love for riding bikes. He just wanted kids riding bikes. And more just, when you're out riding bikes, you're outside. That's, I think, what he would want. Just kids being happy riding. Then there's Da Vinci's perspective on it. It was developed as well to be uh, premium affordable because we wanted this bike to be inclusive and make sure uh, a lot of riders would have this bike to share uh, Steve's passion. Affordable, sorry, premium affordable. I've long liked Da Vinci's bikes, but I tend to disagree with anything being called affordable and inclusive when it goes past the thousands of dollars price point. So Stevie just wanted to get kids on bikes and to have kids being happy out riding. So why is it then that the chainsaw is making me unhappy? Well, it's not for the way this thing pedals. For a bike with 170 millimeters of travel, this high pivot split pivot system of Da Vinci's pedals insanely well. I mean, up a fire road, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between this and a hardtail with some soggy tires. And it's so quiet too. I mean, like the opposite of a chainsaw quiet. That's not a good bike name. I'm sure the armchair engineers out there will tell you all about the pedal efficiency you'll lose in a high pivot system like this. But there is no way that the amount of friction you gain isn't something that can be made up for by taking a deuce, or lubing your chain, or smoothing out your pedal cadence. 
The reality is that the benefits of a high pivot system like this in terms of traction and handling far outweigh the cons of the friction, especially on a bike like this. So, jog on. The chainsaw name came from legendary commentator Rob Warner's opinion of how Smith just massacred the tracks he rode. This lives up to that. It is happiest ripping through the forest when your hands are off the brakes and you're at high speed. Whether it's turning bumps into irrelevance or pushing its way through big turns, rooty rocky off camber sections, or big burmy sweepers. So here's the thing. The chainsaw, at least in the enduro configuration, can't go as fast as it should be able to in order to be comfortable. The most important part of going fast is your brakes. And the stock SRAM G2s feel like I'm using brake pads made of erasers. Ooh. I'm still recording. Oh good. So this is one of the things that I have to say is the brakes on this are not good enough. The bike is totally capable of fast, but the brakes aren't capable of stopping. I need to be able to trust that my brakes are gonna be able to scrub just enough speed so I can make corners instead of constantly making love to tree roots. So I have to ride this thing slower than I'd like to. And that's kind of the thing. It's uncomfortable going slow. I mean, really uncomfortable. It's the geometry. They've taken an incredible suspension design and a really good looking bike and laced it to the trendiest numbers in mountain biking. Making this thing a flop, sorry, making the bike flop from side to side. As soon as momentum is no longer on your side, the wickedly slack 62.5 degree head angle just wants to take any input through the bars or deflection of the wheel and flop the steering to the extreme of one side or the other. And that's the crux about this bike. Its geometry gets in the way of its own performance. The mega slack geo, the long ass front end, and the fact that the back end gets longer as you go through its travel just makes it downright clumsy at technical riding. I like to ride with some finesse, and this bike is just downright not finesseful or playful. Also, the manual from the website says to set your sag at 33%. The sticker on the bike says set it at 20 to 25%. Set it at 20. At 33%, and even at 25, I was whacking pedals off every root and rock in sight. You see, with the wheelbase being so long, a big part of that being this slack 62.5 degree head angle, and the back end getting longer as you go through the travel, it can really mess with your technical riding. And then sometimes you need to throw your weight back over the rear end as you huck a drop with no speed to get the front end up. But the front end's super long and the back end gets longer as you throw your weight back. So the front end, instead of going up, goes down. And then you go over the bars. As per this footage of a drop, I don't normally have to think of. Oh, whoa, what just happened? I don't normally have trouble getting it up, but I struggled to wrestle this thing into a manual. The chainsaw's length and geometry get in the way during technical riding or tight corners. Take this section of tight switchbacks. When I rode the chainsaw through them, the slack head angle causes me to struggle with staying on my line, and the long wheelbase just bogs me down in the middle of each corner. I rode my pump track bike through the same section for an exaggerated comparison to make a visual point. A shorter bike with a steeper head angle will just be faster in technical terrain. Word of advice? I don't recommend riding a pump track bike on the shore with semi-slicks and only a rear brake. It wasn't my brightest move. The length of the bike may be great in high-speed bike park sweepers, but it's like turning the Titanic around in a bathtub here. I also ran into a problem that only a small percentage of people are going to run into. On the extra large that I'm riding, with my seat post at max extension, my post is 11 inches above the frame. Now, I have insanely long legs, so this is a me problem. When I get on the bike, my weight ends up way off the front in technical pedaling, especially at the manufacturer's recommended 33% sag setting. That gave me these weird moments of shopping cart skitteringness with the front wheel. It's like it had a 90 degree head angle. 
So you're all like, but DOD, I'm pretty fast as, and I want a park bike that I can pin it on, and it can take a beating, and I can do X-ups. Fine, this has potential to be fast as, but consider sizing down from what you would normally ride at least. And if you're on the tall side of an extra large and planning on doing any pedaling at all, just get a different bike. The Da Vinci Chainsaw should be a different bike. The Chainsaw should be a bike that encourages kids and newcomers to the sport to learn to ride and go fast. Instead, it's a bike you have to know how to go fast to ride, and you have to ride it in fast and possibly expensive places, like a bike park. I'd like to see a two degrees steeper head angle, 27.5 wheels front and back to allow for the best learning curve and maneuverability, and better brakes. That's what the chainsaw should be. Sure, in a way, the chainsaw is a screaming fast homage to the high speed hijinks of the Canadian Chainsaw Massacre. But Stevie went faster on less. And if what he wanted was for kids to just get out and ride, that's not the bike. 